Today I'll be making this rock pillar. So someone asked me earlier if I could go through some of the steps I took in previous videos in a bit more detail. So here I'm gonna take a more targeted approach by constructing this small object on its own. The background is a ground tile that I'm still in the process of refining for another project, but it's, uh, it's suitable for, for my needs here. So to start off with, it needs to be two layers for RPG Maker, above and below the character. And I'll add in some um, blocked terrain, run around it a bit here so you can see what the finished concept will look like. Okay, here you can see the grid as it would look in RPG Maker. I'm going to quickly sketch in the object, and shape is more important than the details at this point. So here I'm going to adjust the levels to match the background. Most importantly, bringing the darkest part up to match the darkest part of the background. And in general, I'm going to try to work from this dark shape by building progressively more lighter layers on top of it. Now, because I want the character to be able to walk behind the object, I'm going to grab an alpha map of the shape. So I'm going to lock the transparency of the layer, duplicate it, and fill it with black. Then I'll bring up the channels window, and I'll select the alpha. So I'll make a folder over on the layers window, and I'll apply the alpha map I have to that folder. So anything I put in that folder will now will be blocked out by that alpha map. And it looks here like I've got it inverted, so I need to flip that so it's on the inside rather than the uh, outside. Here I'm bringing in the first texture I'll be using. You can see when I bring it into the folder, it remains in that shape. And I'm going to set this layer to darken. So I'm looking to use the cracks of this texture, not so much the, uh, the highlights or the color or anything like that. And I'm going to fiddle around with the levels, and you can see how this works here. But the color information in the texture uh, sort of really screws this up. So I'm going to desaturate the texture, make it black and white, and try again. So now working with the levels, there are two things to consider. The top part represents the input, black and white, and a sort of a weighted middle point. And the bottom represents the output maximum and minimum values. As with many things in Photoshop, there's a lot of different ways to do the same thing. So one, for example, would be to use uh, curves instead of levels. You can do a little bit more with that. So if you have textures that have a much higher um, bit depth, you can usually get more out of using curves instead of levels. Okay, I'm going to duplicate the layer here. I'm going to flip it around and shrink it. I'm going to try to get as much mileage as I can before moving on to the next texture. So I'll use it all over the place to try to vary this thing around. A big part of this whole process is just moving these textures around to see what works, and sometimes things will just uh, sort of fit into place, and that will send you off into a, a new direction. With all that done, I'm going to add a color layer on top so we can match this with the background a bit more. And I'm going to give it a bit of a gradient to leave the top a bit more distinct than the bottom. Alright, now I'm going to bring back that original texture, desaturated, on a lighten color mode this time. And again, playing around with the levels. This time I'm aiming to grab an interesting pattern of highlights. So I'm going to colorize it a bit. I'm going to play around with that. And I'm going to make it slightly more yellow than the background, or the shadow color. 
just like with the cracks on the earlier layer, I'm going to make use of a few duplicate layers here. Either uh, shrunken, flipped, uh, reversed, or otherwise altered in shape to create some variation. With a new texture here, making use of the same principles, uh, working some dark shapes in, then light shapes on top. Another new texture, this time however I'll be using a luminosity layer mode, matching up the contrast in the uh, levels editor. So the color isn't matching up between these layers, so I'm going to tweak that a bit. Another texture here on uh, Lighten layer. And I'm going to speed through the rest here as I'm essentially making use of these same techniques for the most part. Here's the finished version. I added some animated elements in RPG Maker to liven up the scene a bit, and I may do a future video on that. Um, and thanks, thanks for watching.